right, everyone, welcome back to the Hot Takes Podcast, where we are always seeking to be humble, open, and transparent. Today, I have a mindset coach, someone who is going to share himself with you today. I have Paul with me today. Paul, how's it going, sir? I'm doing great, Lawrence. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I'm really excited to uh, talk with you. Man, Paul, go ahead and introduce yourself, your, a little bit of your background before we jump right in. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, my name is Paul Fortune, and I'm a mindset coach. So I help people improve their mindset so that they're uh, more productive at work, more present for their friends and family, and more importantly, they feel better on the inside. Um, so often you know, in our days, we look at things on the negative uh, spectrum, so to speak. So, you know, for instance, like you wake up in the morning, you, you know, get your routine going, you're going to work and you have a flat tire and you go, oh, just my luck. I always have bad luck. Of course, I'm going to have a flat tire. Bad things always happen to me. Yeah, bad things happen to you because you're looking out for the bad things in your life. The same thing could be true if you looked out for the positive things that happen in your life. So I would recommend when you wake up in the morning before you grab your phone to look at your social media or email, whatever you do, TV, whatever, take a moment to think about the things that you're grateful for, things that, that in your life that are good, and focus in on that. Just take a few minutes to do that. And you do that every single day, you're going to start your day off on the right foot. And you're going to start to uh, see things in more of a positive light than in the negative light. So you'll have way more good days than bad days just by doing that alone. Um, I know that, you know, things are going to happen in your day that are going to, you know, ru maybe ruin it. And I'm not saying suppress your feelings. If you're angry, you're sad, it's okay to express those feelings. But after a while, you're going to say to yourself, I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be sad anymore. And that's awareness. And at that point, that's when you can change your mindset to wherever you want it to be, happy, you know, gleeful, whatever, where, wherever it is. But that, that, that's my goal is to make, make people see the positive as opposed to the negative. So that's, that's, that's where I come, come in and help my clients with. Yeah, I love, I love that, Paul, because at the end of the day, um, I, I love this quote. It's like, you, you, you know, your attitude determines your altitude and, and your, your ups and your downs of your day. And, and by controlling your mindset, controlling that emotion, controlling those feelings um, keeps you present um, to, to, take things as they come, but also be proactive in the way you live. Paul, how does somebody, because I'm always talking to coaches, and, and what's the backstory behind Paul that got you to this place today? For me, it actually started at birth. Uh, I was born with something called cerebral palsy, and if your viewers don't know what that is, at birth, there was lack of oxygen going into my brain that caused uh, 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 my the right side of my body to be a little bit slower in uh, motor skills. It can be so severe that it could cause paralyzation and affect your speech. Well, apparently uh, when I was born, the doctors thought it was pretty severe and told my mom that I would never be able to walk, that I should get used to being in a wheelchair. Uh, well, thank goodness for a great mom and a good mindset. She didn't accept that diagnosis, got a second, third, fourth, finally found somebody that was willing to, to help me. And that's kind of where my journey started with 10 years of intense physical therapy. And I hit my first break when I was around three. I don't really remember this, but I defied the doctor. I was able to walk. And that was, you know, the number one thing. Um, and then, but I do remember being five and being put into soccer and feeling kind of defeated because I could only pretty much run 25 to 50 yards where these other kids are doing laps. And, you know, having my dad say to the coach, hey, my boy, that's as far as my boy can run. And I'm like, all I want to do is fit in with the other kids, but I, I just can't. And, and it was just tough. Uh, well, I got my second break right around when I was seven. I got surgery on my right foot to give me a little bit more spring in my step, a little bit of more, more, more mobility. And I wasn't able to test this out yet, but I changed schools around the same time. And I remember the first day of physical education, you know, we do our stretches and the teacher says, okay, go ahead and run a lap. And I'm thinking to myself, here we go again. The teachers, everybody's going to see that I can only run 20, 50 yards. The teasing, the bullying is going to start again. But this time it was different. Uh, I was able to go past that 20 and 50 yard marker that I would always stop at. And I'm saying to myself, come on, Paul, keep going, bud. You got this. You got this. 
and I was able to finish the lap with the other kids, and, and the outside, I kept it cool, but on the inside, I was like, yes, 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 finally, the first time in my life, I'm able to just fit in with these other kids, and I would say that uh, things got easier for me, but I, I wouldn't say they were easy, because I switched schools again in, in junior high, and being a new kid in junior high with no disability is tough, but being a new kid with a disability, oh man, it was brutal. I mean, I was bullied, teased pretty much every single day. Um, and I would come in my room and I would cry and go, why me? Why do I have to be different? Why can't I just be one of these other, other kids? I don't know what came over me, but between my middle of my eighth grade, I was just kind of sick of crying and angry. And I thought to myself, what can I do to distract myself from feeling these feelings? And I thought, well, what if I set a goal for myself so I can focus in on the goal and not worry about what the other people are, are saying about me? And I thought to myself, well, what, what kind of goal do I want to set? And at the time, I really enjoyed baseball. And I thought to myself, okay, why don't you try to make your varsity baseball team? So from that point, I played fall ball, spring ball, winter ball. And if I wasn't doing that, I was throwing a tennis ball against the wall, and I was doing that every single day and something really great happened while I changed my mindset about myself the kids around me changed their mindset about me instead of bullying and teasing me they saw a difference in me and they started rooting for me and I'm proud to say that uh, I was able to make my varsity baseball team as a junior and a senior and I used this this new mindset that I have you know in, into college and I, I remember graduating from college and like a 22, 23 year old kid, I don't know what I want to do. So I had a friend who got it, it was in the mortgage industry, and I said, okay, let me try that. And I was really successful that for a long time. And then uh, 2008, 2009 hit, the economy changed, and they put a lot of restrictions on us. And I kind of started losing the luster of, of, of the business because I couldn't concentrate on the, on the client. I was thinking about what I had to say because I, I had to say my mortgage license number. And if I didn't say my mortgage license number, I could get in trouble. And if I do that too often, I get fired. So I'm starting to think about, oh, did I say that? Because I would have some sh secret shoppers that would call me. And, and so I wasn't thinking about the client, what the clients needed. I was just trying to rattle off what I needed to rattle off to them so I wouldn't get in trouble. So I really lost that luster. But I remember about six years ago, they brought this motivational speaker in to talk with us, and the guy blew me away. The guy was so awesome. So I made a point after the, after the uh, presentation to go up to him and, and thank him for a great job and picked his brain a little bit on how we got into, into the business, and he was very, very gracious, gracious. And I thought to myself, well, why don't I try to get into that? So I got my coaching certificate, and then I knew – you know, making good money as a mortgage loan officer, I wasn't going to make the same money, you know, starting a new business. A lot of times you lose money starting a new business. So I made some financial changes, paid off all my debts, and, uh, and I made the leap uh, as a full-time coach. And that's where I, am, where I am now, talking to you as a full-time mindset coach. Wow. Man, there's, there's so much to unpack there. I mean, from, from the cradle up to this point of in just transition, and, and things that you had, that self-work, that awareness work, and you've used those words, and, and uh, my audience has heard me use those words a lot in the past. And again, is the first person you need to lead is yourself before you can even ask anybody to follow you. Um, and just the way that from each stage of childhood up to this point, you had those kind of check-in moments and those, those defining moments like, okay, either I'm gonna sit here I'm going to I'm going to level up in my the way that I think and the way that I see the perspective that I'm choosing to see this situation in and a lot of times um, whether it's tragedy or whether it's just transition itself people we are our worst enemy with the dialogue and the language that we use ourselves and that mindset that head cheese those gremlins and all that other stuff gets inside of us and and as you really I want you to go deeper for me man because for somebody who says, yeah, that sounds easy, right? He, he, he had a supportive family. Um, that's, that's why he was able to have this internal dialogue that was positive and overall positive. He had really a huge support system. What about that person that's out there and you're like, you know what, stop it. How do you coach that client or what breadcrumbs do you allow a client to set for themselves when they're just really staunch on I got here because I got dealt a bad hand. The first thing that uh, if a client came to me and said that is 
we need to explore self-love. We need to love ourselves first. If, if we do not love ourselves, we're not going to be able to reach the goals that we want to reach because we don't have the confidence inside to go after those goals. So we first have to tackle loving ourselves and giving ourselves a break. If you are dealt a, a bad hand, that's, that stinks. That's horrible. And, and, and give yourself a break about that. Yeah, you, did, you, were, you were dealt a bad hand and, you know, and you're behind the eight ball a little bit, you know. But what can you do? What small steps can you do to get out of that hole? And once you start to realize that and you have the self-love, make some small changes. They don't have to be drastic. I'm not telling you to be on the top of the mountain when you're on the very bottom on the first day. No, make a small, make a small change. You know, maybe it's, uh, uh, you know, waking up earlier. Maybe, maybe, that, maybe you start with that. Maybe you normally wake up, you know, barely to get to work on time. Why don't you wake up a half hour earlier? And then maybe you're able to, you know, you know do some self-awareness with yourself. Maybe do a little reading, motivational books or, or something like that. Start small and then build. Okay, now that I got up a half hour, what's next? What else can I do? Well, maybe we should change your nutrition. Maybe we should eat a little bit better. You know, whatever it is, make it small. And, and enjoy the journey of it because uh, I, I think so many people, and now, you know, like big time CEOs, they, they get to the top of the mountain and they never enjoyed getting there. You know, now they look back 20 years later, oh, and they're like, where did my life go? Because you were so focused on, on being CEO, you never really enjoyed the steps to get there. And that's, that's extremely important. If this is a passion you want to do, if you have a goal that you want to do, you have to enjoy it. Now, I know that every a bit of your goal is not going to be pleasant, but it overall should be pleasant because why are you going to go after it if it's something that you're not really enjoying or your, or your passion? So I, I hope that answered the question. I, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's um, in uh, rest in peace to, to the late John, John Lewis, um, who, who used to talk about good trouble, getting into good trouble when, but it's uh, and owe to uh, one of my favorite movies, Creed. You know, Creed one. He said, "One step at a time, one punch at a time." As you're trying to create new habits and behaviors, you, without that first step, you can't move in the direction of the things that you want. This this thing doesn't happen by osmosis. And and so I love just you talking. Uh, had another old star major used to tell me, you know, find the small wins in your day. Collect the small wins. Collect the small Ws. The, the small, they, they add up to big wins when you begin to create um, good behaviors and repeatable things in your life. Because like you said, like any diet or anything else like that, you can't just one day wake up and say, I'm dieting and I'm eating dry lettuce, two of the three meals of my day. And then I'm going to eat fish. I know I don't really like fish, but fish is what I Googled and they said that's the best dinner protein and then I'm just straight up asparagus nothing like you're gonna be done after day one you might not even make it past the second salad so <laughs> so it's like take the small steps towards your goals and and if you were as you talk to new clients and as they progress down this line what are some of the biggest things that as it pertains to mindset shifting and different things like that what are some of the things that really get people hung up I, I limited belief they, they, their mind, your mind plays tricks on you. They, they, you overthink things because you're like, okay, I want to set this goal. I want to do this. And then you let your mind wander and like, oh no, you really shouldn't do that. You're, you're not good enough, this and that. So what I tell you is take the action. Don't, uh, I, I read a great book. It's called the five second rule by Mel Robbins. I believe her name is. And she's like, you know, if you have a goal, if you have a goal or want to do something, count to five and do it. Because it doesn't allow your mind to, to start to wonder and go, oh, no, no, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't get up there in front of everybody and do a presentation. You're, 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 it's just too nerve-wracking for you. You can't do that. So I, I would say it's just, just go for it. React. And tell yourself you can do it. You have so much ability inside of you, you just don't even know it. And you just got to pull it out. So I would say is the first thing I would do is try to explore what your passion is, whatever that is. And, and, and be patient with it. It takes time to find your passions. I mean, people, you know, some people are blessed. They can find their passion real, real, real quick in life. But some people, I talk to them, people in their 60s and 70s, they're still searching for their passion. But that's okay. They're still searching. That's the key. They're still searching. And what happens is 
your passions changes. You you go through life, different things happen. In your twenties, you could this you'd be passionate about this, thirties, passionate about that, forties, fifties, it keeps changing. So you, you kind of have to keep reinventing yourself because you have different likes and dislikes at that point. Yeah, I love that because you know, as we grow, as we grow, right? It it's like being in any relationship. You could be together for my parents been over 40 years of marriage and just hearing them describe the evolution of themselves in that relationship. And it's like, it's 20 years later, like, Oh, you changed. Well, if you haven't, something's wrong. <laughs> right. And, and so for all of us to give ourselves, and you said it earlier to show yourself that love and, and give yourself that grace to know that with time and with experience, you're going to evolve whether you are conscious of it or not, you're evolving and, and you're adjusting again, conscious or not. And so I believe the mindset part of it is when you start talking about how people are navigating through those limiting beliefs, it now becomes how conscious and aware are you of how you're treating yourself and what you're allowing to come into your surroundings. Because the more conscious we get about how we show up every single day, the more we could begin to reframe and train ourselves when something comes our way that we don't like, right? We, that reaction that gets you upset or something else like that. I was like, okay, I know what gets me upset. Why does it get me upset? I know what makes me happy. Why does it make me happy? And again, just the building the muscle of awareness. And I love that you keep repeating that. And, and particularly around mindset, when, when, when I talk about awareness, it's again, how do I show up and do I know why I'm there? What is really for you, why is awareness such a thing as it pertains to mindset and, and, may, and having the right mindset? What, do, what does awareness play in that for you? I think it's everything. Awareness is everything because, you know, you want to be aware of your feelings. You, if you're sad, angry, you want to be aware that you're feeling these feelings. I don't tell anybody to suppress these feelings. I want you to be aware of these feelings because that way you can, if you're, if you're at a point where you don't want to feel these feelings anymore, you're aware that, Hey, you know what? I'm sad now. I don't want to be sad. I've, I've, I ran that, I ran that journey. I, I'm sad. I, whatever happened, happened. Okay. Now I want to move forward. And the only way you can change it is being aware of those feelings. And then that same thing, when you when you're you know before you go to a presentation and you start having your self doubt at that point you can okay no 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 paul i am not that i am not that stop that thinking i'm going to kill it right now i am not going to fail i am going to do it and that is huge when when you go through your day you know whether you're you know talking with a client you know you start oh I, this client's going to be tough no stop saying that I, I got these skills to handle this client. I will give the service that the client needs to get, give them what they need to, to move forward. And, and I think that without awareness, it, you know, you're not going to be, you're going to be stuck in the mud, you know, and, and, and if you start training your mind to start saying, oh, you know what, oh, stop it, stop it, stop it, you know, go with the positive, go with the positive, you'll start going that way. And we're all human beings, negative thoughts always come into our heads. But the trick is, like you said, it's awareness of realizing, oh, these are negative thoughts. I don't want to go down that road. Let me change my thought process. I love, the, I love that, man, because when, when we begin to explore what right looks like for us, <clears throat> there's such a level of empowerment to that. And as you work with clients, what does, what would you say to them, like, any client that says, you know what, Paul, I want to reach out to you and, I, and I'm thinking about working with you. What's something that you say to a client in that initial discovery session? Well, a lot of times in my initial discovery session with, with them, I do a 30, uh, 30 minute consultation with them to see if we're, we're a right fit. And most of the time, what I'm doing is not talking. I'm listening. I'm listening to what they want, what they're saying. And the, the second thing I, I'm doing is I'm having empathy for the things that they're saying. You know, I'm not judging. I'm coming from a place of care. So I want them to be in this bubble where they can say whatever they want to say to me without me, without them thinking that I'm judging them because that's not where I'm coming from. I want, I'm coming from a place of care and I want to help them. 
So those are the two things that, that, that I do the most. I mean, I, I feel like when I have a successful call is when the client does most of the talking. And, and then, and then what, I, I had this client probably, what, uh, two weeks ago. And she was just in a bad spot with work and stuff like that. And we get caught up in the weeds, right? And a lot of negative things were going on. She was explaining to me, you know, her presentation and this and that. And I was taking notes. I let her go, let her talk about what she was doing, this and that. And then when she was done, I pointed out all the positive things that she was looking at, that she was doing. And she was like, oh, you know what? I was doing that right. I was doing that. I wasn't looking at that. So, you know, to me, after the call, I felt that like I was a win because, you know, her tone and her voice, the start of the call wasn't very good. But the end, I'm not saying that she was jumping for joy and doing flips, but it was definitely, you could definitely hear a difference in her voice. And it was way more positive by in the call. And, 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 and in my head, I did my job. I, I, I changed, helped her see the positive things that she was doing uh, in, in, during that week. I love it, man. That and and for those of you out there that are listening, right? If you're in a initial discovery session with anybody who is calling themselves a coach, and all they're trying to do in that 30 minutes is sell you on their services, hang up, get off the call. Because if you didn't hear what Paul just said, Paul, Paul from the beginning said, "I'm going to hold the space to see if you're right for me, and I and I'm right for you." Right. And, and then listen with empathy and care. That's that's a coach. That's what a coach does is they have you in mind. It's your sessions. It's your discovery. It's you who a coach should show up for in every single session to hold the space so that you feel seen, you feel heard and you feel valued as a client. Because, again, at the end of the day, it's about your progression. And a coach should just be there to help discover that mastery for you, right? And 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 I I love that you hit that. Like you like you just nailed home, like coaching 101 for people. Like if your coaching modality doesn't go there, you might want to check their credentials. You might want to check their credentials. So I love it. I love it. I love it, Paul. Paul, I need people to find you. I need them to connect with you. How do they do? How do they do that? The easiest way to do that is on my website. It's a call to action dot coach and my cell phone's on there. So if you get on my website and you just want to give me a call and we can set up an appointment, that's the easiest way to go. You can do it through my website. You also can check out my content on a call to action on Facebook. And if you like podcasts, and obviously you do because you're listening to this one right now, I actually do my own called Actions and Limits. And Lawrence, I'd love to extend the invitation to switch the seats for you to come on uh, on our show and I can interview you and hear a little bit about your backstory. Oh man, that's, I would love that. I would absolutely love that. And so Paul, thank you. I will make sure that all of your contact information is in the writing and the description of this podcast and, and the, the video as well. But I just want to say thank you for taking the time out today to share a little bit about you and what you're about um, and much success to you and in, in your coaching practice. Thanks, Lawrence. You made me feel very, very comfortable. You're a great host. I'm a fan of your show. So thank you very much. All right, everyone. Until next time.